should a police officer be on administrative leave for an entire year? That is the question when it comes to Baton Rouge police officer Donald Steele. And is he legally receiving a supplemental pay monthly, $500? We'll let you decide all of that. He is on leave for an alleged sexual harassment case where he pulled over a teenager for a DWI a year ago now. It was around 2 a.m. on June 23, 2021, when a 19-year-old was driving down Burbank Drive. My client was leaving her apartment to go to a friend's house. Shortly thereafter leaving her apartment, she was pulled over by Baton Rouge Police Officer Donald Steele. Baton Rouge Police Officer Donald Steele stopped the teen for a possible DWI. Donald Steele began a typical traffic stop, but then nothing typical happened after she was stopped. Ron Haley is representing the female, whose name, unfiltered with Kieran, is choosing not to publish. He asked her if she was drinking that night. She said she had a drink or maybe it was a shot. Um, and he said, well, listen, I can, you know, take you to jail for a DWI, but I'm not because you're pretty. That's when Haley says Steele told her, quote, too many people know him out here, so they needed to move. Afraid to disobey an officer and threatened with an arrest, the 19-year-old did as she was told. Followed Steele to an empty warehouse near Hollywood Casino. It's where Haley alleges the following. She remained there with him for about an hour and a half. During that time, there were uh, multiple Innuendos made by Mr. Steele towards my client. Mr. Steele kissed my client without her consent. Mr. Steele touched my client without her consent. Mr. Steele exchanged phone numbers with my client without her consent. At some point, my client was allowed to go home. Um, Mr. Steele told my client that he wanted to come over later that, or I guess earlier that morning. Haley provided a copy of those text messages to Unfiltered with Kieran, where Steele allegedly texted the Southern University teen several harassing and inappropriate sexual comments. But when you're ready for me to come, leave door unlocked, go back to the bed, take panties off, lick two fingers and rub in a circle motion on your Hey, can I come now? Have a good day at work. Morning. Hey, are you having a good day? I got some money for you to get your nails and toes done. After that, she reached out to Ron Haley, asking him to represent her. Haley said they were able to affirm her story by backtracking Steele's whereabouts on June 23rd. Even though he turned off his body cam and dash cam, his radio was still on. And we learned that the exact route that my client said they went on, it tracked by his GPS and his walkie-talkie. August 25th, 2021, nearly two months since the alleged incident, Steele was arrested and charged with two felonies, second-degree kidnapping and malfeasance in office, plus a misdemeanor, sexual battery. Do you think, had you not gotten involved, maybe an arrest would not have been made? I think it's quite possible. That started the possible criminal proceedings. Before that, though, the Baton Rouge Police Department launched an internal affairs investigation and per procedure put Steele on paid administrative leave, meaning the taxpayers are paying his salary while Steele is ordered to remain at home. Fast forward one year, Steele allegedly remains on administrative leave. As far as this admin leave, this is unprecedented in my experience to have somebody on admin leave for essentially a year. Greg Ferries is a former Baton Rouge police chief who helped explain some of the department's procedures, such as paid admin leave. That is typically done for a few days so that the chief and his internal affairs investigators can determine to their satisfaction whether there's merit to the accusation against the officer. Um, I think someone that's on admin leave for uh, essentially a year as I read the law, they would not qualify to receive that pay. The pay Ferries is referring to is the Louisiana State Supplemental Pay. It's an additional $500 officers can receive monthly on top of their salary. The state supplements the $500 for enforcing state laws. However, in order to receive it, the officer must be post-certified and maintain an up-to-date firearms qualification. 
meaning you need to qualify with your department-issued gun and go through a week-long training called in-service. Per BRPD's policy, when an officer is placed on leave, the department strips the officer of his or her police car, badge, radio, gun, and much more. According to records obtained by Unfiltered with Kieran, Steele, however, was allowed to return to the Baton Rouge PD range on February 25, 2022, for his firearms qualifications. In fact, sources said special accommodations were made so Steele could go to the range, be given his gun to qualify, return the gun, and then leave. Mind you, this happened while Steele was on admin leave and awaiting prosecution on felony charges. Having an updated firearms qualification likely meant Steele could continue receiving supplemental pay. However, if an officer is on administrative leave, does he qualify for supplemental pay? Supplemental pay, uh, per the law, is for people who are doing active police work enforcing laws. That law is this specific Louisiana revised statute that reads people who shall not be entitled to additional pay out of state funds includes people who work purely clerical or non-enforcement duties. When an officer is on leave with no police car, gun, or radio, he or she cannot enforce the laws, meaning the supplemental pay needs to pause. Records here show Steele has been receiving supplemental pay every month this year, as recently as June 30th. And the man approving that pay? Baton Rouge Police Chief Murphy Paul. The authorization for uh, officers to receive state pay is what's called a pay warrant signed by the chief who certifies that the people on that list, the officers on that list, have performed their duties in compliance with the state supplemental uh, pay law. Meaning if an officer should not receive supplemental pay, the chief should not sign off. But a look at all these payments for Donald Steele shows the first signature approving the pay is Chief Murphy Paul, followed by Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom certifying the pay. I think taxpayers should be upset at that, that again, additional tax, taxpayer monies are going to pay an officer that was arrested for doing something illegal while he was on the job. Back to the being on administrative leave for an entire year, Haley says the delay is from the district attorney's office. What we're waiting on is a decision from the DA's office um, as to whether or not Mr. Steele is going to be prosecuted or not. So the matter is still under review, but we expect some decisions here fairly soon. Uh, we had a little bit of COVID setback, but we also had some further investigation that we asked be conducted. Uh, that has been conducted. There's a few other things that we are going to do, but uh, that will, won't take much, much time. And we anticipate that we'll be moving forward with... Uh, charges in one way or the other. Moore said because it's a high profile case involving a police officer, he wants to ensure the case is solid. But Haley says they're not asking for guilt or innocence right now. They simply need to know whether there's enough evidence to move forward with criminal charges for second degree kidnapping, malfeasance in office and misdemeanor sexual battery. This is a case that we are considering taking to a grand jury. Uh, not, has not made that decision yet. Uh, those charges don't require a grand jury, but this is one just based on our review that we may wish to go to a grand jury. It certainly raises questions in my mind as to why these serious allegations have not been resolved one way or the other. If they are true, it certainly merits very, very serious discipline. And if not, if it's not true, if he's, if he's been wrongly accused, he needs to be returned to work for his sake. Haley's client filed a protective order against Steele, claiming Steele was allegedly stalking her and had sexually assaulted her. Nearly a year later, Haley's client's protective order could potentially now be in jeopardy. BRPD is waiting on the criminal proceedings before the internal affairs investigation. But is that normal? I can see a possible reason for it, but uh, in my opinion, you, you can't delay it for this amount of time. It, it, needed, it needed to be resolved a long time ago, and it certainly needs to be resolved now. So you may ask, why does it appear Steele is getting preferential treatment? Steele is a member of the Omega Sci Fi fraternity, the same fraternity of which Myron Daniels is a member. Daniels is the deputy chief over internal affairs. Evidence points towards Chief Paul also being a member of the same fraternity. It's why I've repeatedly requested an interview with Chief Paul. Are you going to comment and interview at all with me? I'm sorry? Are you going to interview with me at all? 
I told you go through the PIO, you know the I've procedure. I've gone through the PIO, and the PIO tells me, Chief, that I need to, they need to wait on you to respond. So I'm confused what's happening here. Well, what was happening is there's a process, and you have to go through the process. As you well know, just like the advocate right there is asking for an interview, and so are others, you have to go through the process. I've done that. After being denied repeatedly, it's why I asked the chief on camera for an interview after a civil service hearing. However, he kept walking and refused to answer. Chief, can I talk to you? Are you just not going to talk to me at all? Are we ever going to interview about anything? Chief, why not interview with me? Are you a member of a fraternity? Chief, you just talked about how all officers should be disciplined. He never did answer if he's a member of the fraternity. Until this day, the chief refuses to interview. What do you feel is the message that is being sent when you have an officer such as Donald Steele and all the allegations against him still a police officer? I think it sends a bad message that you could basically get away with anything without um, having any real consequence. You could do something so egregious uh, that leads to you being arrested, but yet you're still uh, allowed to not necessarily have the badge, but you still have the benefits of that badge. You're still getting paid by the taxpayers. Donald Steele's attorney, Franz Beauregard, did issue a statement. My client, Mr. Steele, is on paid administrative leave with the Baton Rouge Police Department, and issues in regards to his compensation should be addressed through BRPD. Now, we did try that, but the police chief did not respond to our request for any comment. However, the lawyer for the police department did, saying I am a freelance reporter, and that means I am another member of the general public, unless otherwise designated by the chief of police himself. As of yet, my designation is not media, per the chief himself. Meanwhile, a date has not been set yet for if and when this case goes before a green jury. With Unfiltered with Kieran, I'm Kieran Chawla.